Hello, amateurs, and welcome to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit with me today, Elko. How are you? TT, I'm very good. Uh, Happy New Year. I think we can still say that. And it's uh, that went quick, didn't it? Be between um, World Cup and boom, we're, we're back at uh, Six Nations time, our favourite time of the year. 100%. It went really quick, but it's good to see you. Um, and in this episode, we are going to be talking about the Scotland squad selection. Uh, But before we dig into actually some of the details, maybe just like give me your thoughts on sort of the overview of maybe where Scotland are following the World Cup and how Gregor Townsend might want to sort of move the squad forward. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, They obviously had a a disappointing World Cup. Um, I don't think the the rugby public were that happy. There was a lot of sort of um, unrest in the ranks, uh, as we saw on on, on social media and stuff. I, I thought it would be a good opportunity for a team that probably didn't do as well as they thought they would have to really make some big changes and and bring in some some new blood. Now they've 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 done that. There's there's four uncapped players and they've they've left out some some interesting people. Um, but uh, is Scottish rugby in a state where they can actually do that because they've got they've only got a couple of of pro teams and and they're not in that sort of um in that chair where they've got lots of young kids coming through that they, they could do that in any case. So I think he, he's probably done what he, what he, what he, what he's had to do is, is, is to maintain a, a spine of the team and um, make a couple of interesting additions um, and get rid of um, certainly one individual. I, I didn't think he'd get rid of. Yeah, I think, I, I think you're right. Results wise in the world cup, it uh, obviously very disappointing, but I still think there's the basis of a really good team there. They didn't get the performances they wanted, yeah. um, but, but I still think there's a very solid team there in Scotland. And that is, uh, that's reflected in the squad selection. So we'll take a look at that now. Uh, he's picked a 39 man squad, which is quite big. Um, uh, and as you mentioned, four uncut players, and we're looking at um, that is the, Backs. I wanted to go with the forwards first. There we go. There's the forwards. Um, yeah, I, I mean, when I look at this this forward selection, I, I look at, I, I see strong, I see experienced and pretty stable. You know, there's a lot of players there with quite a number of caps. Uh, is there anything sort of you want to pick out on the forward side? Well, only that Watson isn't there. <laughs> um, which I think is just... I just don't get it. Um, Darge is injured. Um, the natural, I would have thought, seven to come in would, would have would have been Watson. Um, I know that uh, the the, the uh, Warriors and and Edinburgh have been doing uh, doing pretty well in the in the last round. Um, only just got beat uh, with a controversial decision, but um, I, I was just really surprised at, at, that they've that they've left him out. Um, and I'd, I'd love to know why that's happened um is there something behind the scenes that we don't know um gregor has got form for that whether whether something something's been said um during the world cup i don't know um but again look if we look at the positives um and actually to go back to your point don't get me wrong i I think scotland are a very dangerous team and actually i would be picking them to be doing very very well um i think it does it will all be decided on how well this four pack can get the backline ball because the backline is exceptional, which we'll go on to in a second. So, um, and bringing Hepburn in after a hiatus from, from English duty back in the last 2018, I think he played for England. Um, I think it's what, what a great selection. Now he, I wouldn't have, you're more of an expert in this. I, I wouldn't have thought he's a, 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 a massive scrummager. Um, I think he's very solid, but I think around the park, he, he is brilliant and will fit into that. Townsend mould of, of quick running ball um, as a forward there. So that's an interesting um, selection there. So I, I just think if they can if they can get ball, if they can mould very quickly uh, and continue what they've been doing. And I think where, where they got let down in the World Cup is they didn't dominate at any stage against the two big teams they had to, and, and they got they actually got dominated again. So I think that will be that will be an issue for them, but that could be the fire that lights them and, and they should know if they get ball, they've got probably the most dangerous attacking line bar France. Um they could do some serious damage and rip some people apart. Yeah, absolutely. I mean you picked out Hepburn there, but I'm gonna talk about Hurd as well, who's um 
that makes three tight heads from the Leicester Tigers squad that have been picked in, in the Six Nations now, which is remarkable from, from one club, I think. So um, well done to him for getting the call up. Um, yeah, interesting one. Uh, I mean, the back row options, they do still have a lot of very good back row options. And, you know, some good players playing good rugby for their clubs in the Premiership in particular that, that I know about. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. Maybe there was something behind the scenes. Who knows? Um, yeah, okay, I mean, let's move uh, on. I think, Darge, I think Darge is injured. So I know he's selected, but I, I think he's carrying a knock. And that's why it's even stranger. But Gregor's not going to be told, right? I think he, he, he'll... He'll do what he thinks is right for the squad and and uh, and move them forward. But yeah, they, they, they've got options there. Fagerson, I thought was was exceptional the other day um, uh, against uh, Chiefs. I think and um, yeah, he, he'll be he'll be one to watch again. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's take a look at the backs. Um, and yeah, it's a, again, it's a fairly sort of stable selection. You know, there's a lot of people there that have played a decent number of caps. I mean, the one big. Uh, standout um, person that isn't there is Chris Harris. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's another one sort of gone. Um, and again, I'm not sure what's what's going on there. But the what he's got in the centres there is 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 very powerful. Um, and um, they're on form those boys um, in 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 Champions Cup and stuff. So. The the interesting one is is this new cap uh, Aaron Reid, South Sharks, who, who who's played for England at under 18s and, and under 20s, and 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 is very well um, sort of looked at at sale. And it's an interesting one that that England didn't um, didn't go with maybe getting him into the squad to protect him, um, like they have done with another individual. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, the, the, if you look at the the Scottish um, halfbacks, it's just the de- the strength and depth there is is scary. You know, you know, so who they got at ten? They got obviously Finn, who's the god, um, Healy, and um, what's that? The guy with the really Hastings. unfamous Scottish name, yeah, Hastings. Um, three three tens who could arguably, you know, be a number one somewhere um, at international level, and then they got Price. Horde and White um, at nine, who I think are you know got bags of experience and and, and can change games. So again, going back to a point, the back line is scarily good. Um, if if the pack can get get some ball there, it'll be be really good. That's a there's a lot of consistency in selection um, by Tan's end, and I'm kind of turning my point the wrong way around. But fair play to him. I think um, that again they can do some some serious damage, and obviously with Duan uh, on the wing as well. Should be good to look at. Yeah. I mean, I watched Chris Harris uh, last week or a few weeks ago, I think, in the Bath Gloucester game. And I, I I thought at the time he didn't quite look on it. He looked at either either the game was too fast for him. He maybe didn't look fit enough or maybe he's just he's just dropped off. But like he didn't he didn't look as physical. He didn't look as imposing to me anyway. And, and he and I know Gloucester is struggling, but he didn't really have an impact on that game. The other interesting combination which might come about again I saw that in the same game is Finn Russell playing with Cam Redpath at at, uh, club level and whether that will be transferred into the international ranks because Redpath is playing some fantastic rugby he looks so so composed and he just just makes good decisions he looks quick on the ball good skills so that'll be an interesting one to see whether that comes about as well yeah he's got a lot of time on the ball um it's it's interesting, TT. This, this um, selection, <clears throat> so it's. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling my age. <laughs> there's, there's like I've had to do research on some players I'd never heard of uh, with the Indian side um, and the Welsh guys. Uh, uh, the, the names are starting to sound very familiar, and I know why that is. <laughs> it's because used to sort of be playing at the same time as as some of the guys that were that were there. So it's 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 it is it's funny, but um you can't you know Red Pass and, and, and Hastings, you can't you can't buy class. They, they those two boys they seem to have a lot of a lot of um time on the ball. And um, going back to your point about um Chris Harrison being off the boil a little bit, I agree. And there's a few there's a few players that have come back or certainly in the last few weeks that that ain't on us and I'm wondering, is it is it a chicken and egg? Are they not getting into the squads because they're not on it, or do they know they're not getting in the squads and they're 
they're a bit oof, damn. They've had they've had conversations with coaches before. I mean, we'll 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 speak about this in another show. But with 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 Farrell, I thought you know obviously his, his head is. I know he's not in. He's he's called it, and he's not. He doesn't want to be selected. But he's he's been playing really poorly, and I think it's probably because of of all the noise in behind the scenes with with other things, just sports psychology, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's a fair point, and. Although, you know, if they know they're not going to be involved, you'd probably like them to react more positively than that and, and you know, go out and try and prove the national coach wrong. But we all know that it's tiny, tiny margins. And if your head's just slightly not right, slightly thinking about something else, it's that time of year when contracts are coming around as well. So if you're fighting for a new contract, possibly leaving to go somewhere else, all of these things can affect performance for sure. Yeah. I mean, you might have a... Whereas, where, whereas a Christmas, you may, you may be, you know, very professional and and really look after yourself. If you if you've had bad news, you may have a bit of extra Christmas pudding and brandy and go off the rails. Like, not that I ever ever did that. <laughs> not ever, not once. Okay, let's uh, let's bring this Scotland uh, chat to a close. Any sort of final thoughts? Um, do you, do you see the Scotland sort of style of play changing based on this squad selection, or do you or do you think they're going to continue on the path that they're on? No, absolutely no. Uh, the fact Finn Russell's there that it's, they're not going to change. Um, it, it, they will they, they will keep they will. You, you see what he's doing down in Bath and how the players now are starting to to, to play off him and stuff. It must be awesome to to have him in, in a squad, and 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 he mentally seems really. And I get it's probably moving to a new club, and 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 um, and what a club to move to, uh, very different to where he was before. He he really seems to have a drive. You can see him; he's he's tackling um, heavily and, and getting involved. So so I think no, I think he and if he can bring that to to, to the Six Nations with Scotland, I think again they'll be very dangerous. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing them play. But I think they'll they'll keep the way. Uh, they have been playing and that will be in the, the, the Finn Russell mould as long as he can stay um, fit and healthy. 100%. Uh, yes, I'm inclined to agree as well. And I think they might well have a very strong Six Nations. But what do you guys think at home? Uh, have we missed anything from this squad selection? Any people that are going to play a pivotal role that that maybe we've missed out on? Uh, let us know in the comments be down below. And while you're there, give this video a little thumbs up if you don't mind and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the other videos we're going to do throughout this Six Nations Championship. So, Alco, thanks very much. Yes, DT. And for you at home, get out and play.